Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. The first time a widow of a um, law enforcement professional came up to me, I was actually at a gathering uh, I had been invited to, and I had just got done speaking, and I come off stage, and people are talking to me. She comes up, and she hugs me, and she says, I wish somebody was there for my husband like you were there for Ed, and she's crying. There's no way to respond to that, okay? There's, and that's not in any training manual, any book, or anything <laughs> right. like that. You don't know what to do except to look at her and cry as well. Um I I never lead out, hey, I'm Thomas. I'm the guy who saved this. Right. You know, I introduce myself as a photojournalist. If people recognize me and they want to ask questions, I'm more than happy to answer because they're curious. But even to this day, I'll get guys from different departments, gals from different departments, even first responders, they'll recognize me. And I just kind of shook my shoulders I'm like, yeah, you know, because, you know, I don't... It's not what defines me. And, and even to this day, when people try to call me a hero, John Correa loves to do it to me all the time. You're a hero. And I got a couple other buddies too. It just, I, I just do what I do, you know? And, and I don't think it's a bad thing, but at the same time, I don't want people to ever think that to say I'm proud that I was actually, again, the Lord put me there. He chose me to do his work. Absolutely. To that is, that is a thing. I had the ability and I was able to save a man's life. Not many people can say that. But I also don't look at it as something I should wear on my sleeve and tout about. Like, And this is no disrespect to the, the statues and the plaques and a lot of different gifts that people gave me. I don't display those. The community even replaced your sidearm too, didn't they? Um, uh, James Smith with Phoenix PD did. He was quick. He was Johnny on the spot with that. Um, and he's actually the first one who took me out and got me back on the range and everything. Um, so a lot of people the day that the day after that I had had the, the, the big reveal. So I'm at Circle K. It's like zero four hundred. I'm getting my cup of coffee and I got two guys who are like, we could never do that. Thank you for what you did. And I'm like, oh my God, I just want to get out of here. And I know the kids at the Circle K. I go to the Circle K every morning. Oh my God, dude, you're a hero. We saw you on TV. You're never paying for your coffee again, <laughs> you know? And I, and I get to work. At that time, I had taken um, a, a job as a maintenance supervisor while I was still going to school. Um, and my office was in the basement. So I was hiding in the basement because nobody there knew. And now they did. So the general manager gets there and he calls me upstairs. And so I'm walking up the stairs in the front. <laughs> This guy, his name's Ted, retired judge, is holding up the front page. <laughs> Thomas, oh my God, you know? The residents put cards in my box. So, I mean, it was very nice. But then, you know, later on that morning, I was having a, a breakfast meeting and all eyes are on me. And it just took one waitress there. Again, place I go to all the time, came up and hugged me and she was crying. And then, of course, everybody wanted to pay for it. Some of the best advice I got from James Smith was people are going to want to thank you, they're going to have questions. Give them grace because they just don't know. And right. They're curious. And so I always had that playing in my head as much as I'd want to run away or um, were in times where I thought I'd lose my composure because it was so overwhelming. Again, time and a place for that um, because I didn't want anybody to get the wrong idea. Um, and again, it's just it's something that happened in my life and I don't feel it defines me. It's part of who I am. Again, I would never... I would never allow someone to be victimized by anybody to my own peril. I mean, right. I've had my ass kicked before stepping in for somebody who was smaller and I took the pounding from the big guy. Um, but it is part of my life and it's always going to be there. And I, it, my biggest wish is when people would, when they want to talk about it, they, they want to actually hear the story, not just the snippets. Exactly. Because you can't just take little cuts and excerpts and get the full picture. There's a reason when I do my presentation, I call it the pre-fight, the fight, and the post-fight. You have to know who I am and where I came from to understand how I got there and then that road to recovery afterwards. Um, and so it's it's the trifecta. But I understand. You you know, meet someone for five minutes, they just want the, the down and dirty broad strokes of it. And they want to get that picture. 
They want that photo. Yeah. I'm, I'm still amazed when people want to get their picture taken. I'm like, me? Who am I? You know, I just, I'm a photographer, you know. At the, at the end of the day, I'm a photographer, you know. I'm, I'm still a father. I'm still a grandson, you know. Um, I wear a lot of different coats, but... Um, so yeah, so for me, it's, so it's, it's pre, uh, go through those three, the, the titles again, the pre fight, right, the pre, fight pre, and the post fight and the post fight. We've talked about the recovery. We've right. talked about the folks. If you haven't seen this gentleman's photography, you need to go on Facebook, Instagram. We're going to get him on a YouTube channel as well. Uh, for that brief period of time when I was around the white house, I learned that, and you notice white house photographers use black and white because it imparts, uh, the historic meaning to it. Thomas uses monochrome, but guess what, folks? They don't all use film anymore. You know, I'm a little old. He has a black and white digital camera. Uh, when he posts a picture, you get a story. I want to call him Arizona's modern-day philosopher. If we had a poet laureate, uh, and, you know, you may not know I'm the child of hippies, so in the 70s and 80s I was exposed to Est and all these mind expanding things. And, you know, nowadays we've got 30 second sound clips and Thomas is in New York. He's trying to track him down. is always fun. I was like, do I call him? Cause is he in New York? Is he in New Orleans? He's a regular fixture in New Orleans, New York, and most recently the protest here in Phoenix. I love portraiture and I love portraits over the years. Thomas has taken a lot in Vegas too. Well, everywhere he's taking pictures everywhere. If they have daylight or moonlight, he's taking a picture there, but he takes portraitures. But he doesn't just take the picture. He meets the person and talks to him. Everyday folks don't want that. They're nervous. Everyday folks have got an agenda. So you end up taking, for the most part, homeless people. Homeless and indigent people. Homeless yeah. and indigent people's pictures. And and the one I love, and they're more homeless than the couple who have been together 60 years. Yes. You said you heard them coming before you saw them. So there's That a, was in New York. That was last year at the Tour de Force. So you... Spend some time, follow him, get into these pictures and look at them. Read these captions. It's just, it's powerful. It's moving. Uh, his calling is not just a photographer. I know he doesn't like to say publish, but you are you write articles. Uh, you write excellent prose. Uh, you make my Instagram captions look like those of a three-year-old, which I don't mean to insult any three-year-olds watching. But in-depth, uh, when you talk about cameras, I get nervous because there's no film. And you're really technical, but you know how to operate that just like you know how to operate your handgun. Do you make money on photography? I do when I'm lucky. So I think... That's uh, for all of you aspiring photographers right. out there who have a great talent and a great art. And I don't want you, I want you guys to make money, and I don't want your estate to make money when you become famous after you pass away. But Right. Um, so I'm fortunate. Um, I have, I've done contract work and, uh, grant work for the Department of Education, um, which right now, because of what we're in the midst of with COVID, that went the way of the dodo back in March. Um, I do content for C2 Tactical. Um, I have been doing content for them for the last two years. So if you see something on their site that's good, that's my work. And if it's not good, it was somebody <laughs> else. No. Um, uh, I do freelance work, um, for a, a bit of time. I was contributing regularly to KTR news. I've had some other media outlets, um, option to reprint some of my photos and my writing. Um, I do work for instructors. Uh, now you, you <clears throat> instructors in Arizona, you know, you guys all, and I do sponsor sh- uh, instructors and I'm willing to sponsor you guys who come out here anytime after April 2nd, it's too freaking hot. Yeah. If you watch these photographers out there, if these guys are running stages, Thomas is running laps around them while they're running stages. I love to shoot, brother, and I, but you are a machine on the range. If you're shooting a stage for one of your contracted shooters, how many pictures do you take? So typically, uh, I have my camera set up for a high burst rate. So whether they're doing pistol, rifle, or shotgun, uh, when that beeper goes off and I hit the shutter button, it's anywhere from 70 to 90 images just for that one shoot. So that being said, whether it's, you know, they finish up in 10 seconds or 21 seconds, sometimes I got to let off the shutter and let that buffer clear and kind of feather it if you're a photographer, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so if you take one shooter and let's say 75 images for each shooter, and in the course of the day, I've photographed 50 shooters, you can do the math. It's a lot of images. It's not uncommon for a full day of a three gun match, 
um, that I have 10,000 images to sift through. So is your Dropbox bill like 13000 a month? Okay. It's not because I'm very picky and a lot of local shooters – and some of them have waited months to get one image of themselves because I'm so picky about what I edit. So that 10,000 at the end, the yield might be 50 to 70 images just because I'm looking for facial expression, brass, muzzle flash, uh, the way the smoke's coming from the gun, the way the shell's ejecting from the gun. There's so many different um, variables that I, you know, and sometimes it's the simplest candid picture on the range. Um, I got this great one. He's always down at Rio and he smokes a cigar and he actually smoked the cigar when he shoots and he just happened to turn just, and I was there and he had this big smile on his face just cause he was talking to somebody. And that, that was the image of the night because it was just so natural and, and lucid. You, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Um, so yeah, so on the range, it's, it's all about now when I'm in the street, I'm very more deliberate. Um, I take the time to talk to a person and once I, I see their body language change and their demeanor change. Um, I hear their voice relax. I know now it's time. Hey, do you mind if I take a photo? And even then, I wait and I wait and then I take that image. And sure, I'll take, you know, five or six just so I can kind of see which one, you know, that subtle nuance again, the eyes, the mouth, everything. Um, but I could spend a week in New Orleans and only take 200 photos where a day on the range, well, I'll give you an example. So last year, the tour de force, right. the, the image that you like so much, the older couple in New York, that was 22,000 images Whoa! <laughs> over the course of a five day ride. Um, so that was a whole lot to go through, but you also have 300 riders, um, that are with law enforcement from across the country. You have 200 people with the support crews. I'm in the back of a Ford F-150 with my friend Diane Pontius, who's a photographer from, from Connecticut. I call her my sister from another mister. And man, I'm just, I'm blasting away, you know? But wow. these guys and gals, when they see those images, when it's done, see, and that's where the juice is for me. A lot of the people I talk to on the street and I get their images in monochrome, you know, most of these people don't have social media. They don't have Instagram. So I can never share that gift that they've given to me. But I've also had lots of them say, thank you for talking to me. It's been so long since someone's treated me like a person. And so that means a lot to me. Um, for that brief moment, I give them a chance to realize that they're loved, that they're cared for, um, and that there's hope, you know, that not all people are bad. And just to kind of keep your chin up, you know. Um, so again, it's a blessing to be the blessing. And then I hope with some of the stories that I write that people see that and they realize that. Now, where do we find your stories? So um, the biggest body of my work can be found on Instagram, and it's sure shot photo, and it's sure underscore shot photo. Um, if you're looking to see my gun industry stuff, the three gun match stuff, uh, anything related to firearms, it's going to be sure shot productions, all one word. Or you could just go to my Facebook and follow me at Thomas Yoxel, and everything eventually goes there. Like, I never post where I'm eating, I'm doing this or that. If it's not content related, it's not on my page. And you can buy things from Thomas. And I learned just yesterday how you go about that. I, for some reason, had, had a dream or something, probably from some pizza I ate, that there was a sales <laughs> site, but there's not. If you see something on any of those, platforms that you like right so you can actually also go to my web gallery which is sureshotphotography.org um all my images are for sale the caveat to that is i've had some people reach out and say oh i just want it printed by an eight by ten yeah no so the native resolution is typically um 26 uh, by 17 um or larger depending on if there was a crop or not um they're printed on acrylic metal or traditional paper, silver tone paper. Um, I have a gentleman here locally who does amazing work. He's the only person I use. So if you would like to purchase a print, just let me know which one you like. Let me know what medium you'd like it printed on. I can get you a quote usually within 48 hours. Um, and people that are local, I deliver to you, you know, hand deliver it. I've done that before. If you're somewhere in the country, um, I always tell people it's $25 for shipping anywhere in the continent of the United States because I know the owner of my local uh, U.S. post box place right, type right. thing. Um, but I have never had a customer that's received a damaged image. This The guy I use for shipping is is amazing, and that's why I pay what I pay because I want to make sure that my customer gets the product that they wanted. If I'm a church group, a uh, youth leader, or an agency that wants to talk about civilians helping out and civilians involved and what that happens like, I know you have a presentation. I do. do. 
Uh, can they also reach you through the same medium? Yes. So um, it's always best to um, reach me because I'm not going to actually give up my phone number. I right. get a bunch of crazies. You, yeah, know. Okay. you made that mistake. You gave me your number. Yeah, you, and true. I know you regret that no, already. No. Um, so, yeah, you can typically Facebook is the best way. Facebook Messenger. Now, if I don't answer you right away, it's because I'm not an aficionado of social media. Sometimes I don't realize that there's a pending message from somebody new. Give me a little grace on that. Um, but I tell typically everybody that I'm available. It's just whether or not I'm in town. Right. Um, so I think I believe all things can be scheduled. But you will I travel have, if, 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 you, if asked. Oh, yeah. No, I'll travel anywhere you want me to. I've been down to Brazil with John Korea to MagTac. So, I mean, I'll go wherever wherever the job is. Um, I have hundreds and hundreds of hours of ride-along experience with a bunch of different departments. I'm doing a lot of work right now with El Mirage PD, which is great. So if you are local law enforcement and you want me to come out and do a great expose on your department, just reach out to me and let me know. I have canine interdiction experience. I have SWAT experience, um, regular run-of-the-mill patrol officer experience. I've been involved in high-speed pursuits, drug busts, prisoner transport, you name it. Um DUI task force, I've done it all. Actually, one of my, um, what I felt was um, profound images from deep one of the DPS, uh, we happened to get there right as the motor pulled the gentleman over. It was a single vehicle collision. He wasn't hurt. Nobody else was hurt, thank God. But the series is of him, you know, out of the vehicle, doing the test, the breathalyzer and everything. And so that five image series, the five images from start to finish, it was, it was amazing. Again, all monochrome, um, you know, and um, some people would be like, oh, you're violating their privacy. Well, okay, so technically I'm not. And believe right. me, I know the laws of what I can and cannot do and everything like that. Um, so it's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. But it also, so I'm pro law enforcement. I did a broadcast the other day where I said, there's two flags that fly in front of my house, the American flag and the blue line flag. That's it, you know, and and I expect equal out of both. Right. Okay, I have expectations. Um, but the amount of time that I have spent with law enforcement professionals across the country, not only riding with them, but associating with them, I have a very unique perspective as a civilian on, on what they deal with. Um, I could tell you the first time I was at a multiple vehicle collision where there was a fatality, and I'm watching a first responder lie to the husband because the family's dead. That's horrible. I never want to experience that again. That's just what they do, you know, a dozen times a year, you know, more than what we realize. This stuff doesn't make TV. So a lot of times when, because I know a lot of people from various, you know, spectrum in the political spectrum, sometimes it's hard for me to have articulate logical discussion with them because you know they're they're very here and if it's not this then you must be wrong and i try to let them know guys it it's the last time you've been in a police cruiser well i never have i've never done a ride all he can't really talk then can he you know and, <laughs> and and some people i've had people my conservative friends reach out to me and go oh what are you a liberal now why because i chose to write a truthful narrative on an image or you know a story my liberal friends, oh, I didn't realize you were alt right now. Why? Because I gave a, you know, an interpretation of what I witnessed, a very accurate interpretation of what I witnessed. You know, I've got the You're not alone. Again, we're you know? all getting that. We're yeah, all getting so, that these days. So I think it's interesting. And one of the things I had said a couple of weeks ago, um, I thanked everybody who chooses to follow me because it is a choice to follow me, to follow my work and everything for trusting me to bring them a truthful narrative. It may not be the popular narrative, but there's one version of the truth. That's it. And even your even your writing style is a work of art. It's something. <laughs> now, what you guys didn't see is before we started, I slipped him a fifty and a no, gift and, card to the. <laughs> everybody <laughs> knows that I fifty dollars <laughs> just get nowhere with me. You can't maintain this size on just fifty dollars. <laughs> you said Shake Shack. I, I, I get fat shamed by those people at Shake Shack when I go there. <sighs> Lord. So this has been fun. It's been amazing. I, Thank you so uh, much uh, for I the hope opportunity. It touches some, Thank you for trusting us and spending a, your day with us. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, this is probably the perfect time to reach down and hit that like button. Also, the subscribe button. Why not go crazy and just hit the notification button as well? For those of you listening on audio, I really want to appreciate it. If you've got small kids, friends, 
libraries open in your community, go in there, download this podcast to every device there. When the stores add their phones back, go in there and download it. Everybody, I appreciate your time. I really appreciate your time, Thomas. Oh, I look forward pleasure. to seeing you behind the lens on the range and probably sharing this seat with me again real soon. We've got somebody so. else with us. Help me take the heat off. Absolutely. Thank you again. No, thank you. Any last and, words? Um, everybody, like I said, train, train, train. You know, um, I always go say that, you know, firearm manipulation is a diminishing skill, which people say all the time. But it is so imperative that if you are going to take on that responsibility as a gun owner, that you do not perpetuate the stereotypes and myths of gun owners and by doing that being responsible and and getting adequate training on a regular basis from qualified instructors competent instructors um then you should maybe think twice about owning a gun be kind to yourself and others and god bless god bless perfect thank you 